Welcome to the Archive for Sexology. Among many other things, we also offer an online curriculum in sexual health. Its six courses can be taught in the classroom, but can also be studied at home. I am the author, Erwin Haverly. One of my courses deals with human sexual behavior, as you can see here. Obviously, this course has to cover a lot of ground, and in this short video, I cannot give you even as much as a summary. However, I can perhaps pique your curiosity by referring to something in its introduction. As in my other courses, I start here by explaining some basic terms. For example, in popular discussions of sexual behavior, one often hears the term sex drive. Indeed, the idea that human beings, like other animals, are possessed by a sex drive, that is a biological force that drives them to have sex and thereby to reproduce, is widely accepted and rarely questioned. But does this idea really make sense? Well, I for one do not think so. The whole idea that animals, including humans, are basically inert and have to be driven into activity has long been questioned even by biologists. Thus, they see no need to speak of a hunger drive making animals hungry or of a thirst drive making them thirsty. Of course, one thing is certain. Insufficient food and drink will create an imbalance that must be rectified. And all animals will try as hard as they can to do just that. The hungrier and thirstier they are, the more food and drink they need to restore the previous balance. And if they cannot find any food and drink at all, they will eventually die. Satisfying these basic needs is essential for their survival. Becoming hungry or thirsty is therefore simply a manifestation of their being alive. You don't need the concept of a drive to explain it. In my course, I go a little deeper into this discussion, but now I'll cut it short, skip the case of even the lower and higher mammals, and jump right ahead to us human beings. And here we are immediately confronted with some fundamental questions. If there is such a thing as a human sex drive, what exactly is it? Is it a drive to reproduce? Or is it a drive to release a specific tension in a specific way? Or is it a drive to experience pleasure? But be that as it may, we can easily see that in the case of sex, the concept of a drive makes little sense. First of all, sexual activity is not necessary for the survival of any organism. A lack of food and liquid will lead to death. But a lack of sex has never killed anyone. Secondly, the strength of sexual desire does not depend on the degree of sexual deprivation. Sexual abstinence does not always increase sexual desire and frequent sexual activity does not always diminish it. On the contrary, some people who have been abstinent for a long time eventually lose all interest in sex, while others who are extremely active continue to be easily aroused. Furthermore, people usually do not make themselves deliberately hungry or thirsty, but they often actively seek sexual arousal. Also, unlike hunger and thirst, this arousal may be caused and increased by psychological factors alone. And finally, hunger and thirst are experienced as unpleasant, 
while sexual arousal feels good and is thus rewarding in itself, even if it remains unsatisfied. So, if the idea of a sex drive is not really useful, what other way is there of looking at human sexual behavior? I think we can get a clearer picture once we break it down into three basic components. Capacity, motivation, and performance. Here is a brief explanation. The term sexual capacity refers to what we are capable of doing sexually, that is, what human beings can do. We are talking here about the intensity and extent of the human sexual response. A person's capacity in this sense is very different at different stages of life. In a baby and a young child, it is very low indeed. It increases during puberty, remains high in early and middle adulthood, and then gradually decreases with advancing age. Also, it is not the same in every individual. Some are born with a higher sexual capacity than others. The term sexual motivation refers to what we are motivated to do sexually, that is, what human beings want to do. Again, this greatly depends on their age, but also on other factors, for example, their health. And again, the strength of sexual motivation is not the same in all women and men. It also varies with the different capacities. Finally, the term sexual performance refers to the amount of sexual activity we actually perform. That is, what human beings really do. And this, once again, depends on various factors. It is very clear, for example, that the amount of sexual performance largely depends on opportunity. Once we look at these three components of human sexual behavior, we see right away that they are rarely, if ever, in perfect agreement. After all, very few of us have the chance of always doing sexually what we can do and want to do. In males, for example, the greatest sexual capacity is usually reached shortly after puberty. However, because of various social restraints and a lack of opportunity, the actual sexual performance of male teenagers may still be low. It may reach its peak only in adulthood when their opportunities have increased. By that time, however, their capacity may no longer be as great as before. Or to take another example, it has been shown that in females the sexual capacity is often much greater than the sexual motivation. In some people, one may also find a high level of sexual performance combined with a low level of sexual motivation. Instead, the motivation may be mostly financial, as in the case of a prostitute, or social, as in the case of a tired wife who wants to hold on to a husband. All of this is so obvious that we don't need to explain it any further. However, just to drive home the point once and for all, here is a little illustration with a few examples. A teenage girl may experience serious crushes on boys and thus already have a high sexual motivation. But her actual sexual capacities may still be relatively underdeveloped and her social circumstances may not allow her a high level of sexual performance anyway. In contrast, a Catholic nun, having taken a vow of chastity, may not allow herself any sexual performance at all. And both her capacity and her motivation 
may be low to begin with, or may have become low over time. A prostitute, on the other hand, may have an average sexual capacity, and her motivation may be mostly financial, not sexual. Nevertheless, the level of her sexual performance may be very high. It may even exceed her sexual capacity if, for the sake of money, she simply fakes it and mechanically goes through the motions. Something, by the way, that a male cannot do. Finally, you see here a very young and a fully adult man. Their sexual capacities and motivations may be very similar, but since the older one may be married and thus have more sexual opportunities, his level of performance may be higher. Summing up, the term sex drive does not explain very much when we talk about human sexual behavior. But when we break it down into several components, as we have done here, it is much easier to understand and discuss. This is what I try to do in my course, where you can find much more information. After all, after this and other initial clarifications, the matter does get a little more complicated. So, if you're really interested, you may want to take a closer look at it.